Something big coming up on your screen. Just settle back and relax, cause you're gonna get a whole lot of singing, a whole lot of laughing, a whole lot of loving from me. This was a beautiful day right from the start. You know, my most important meal is breakfast. If I'm not home by then, my wife really gets angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I spent a lot of time today with my son, Ricky. You know, you can learn a lot from your kids. Like this morning, Ricky told me uh, what he's studying in school, and I learned a camel can go 30 days without water. And I learned something else. I'm a camel. <laughs> and you know, I got to thinking, ooh, it'd be better if we put them cards on the floor. I wouldn't have to get up at all. <laughs> oh, and you know, I was thinking, when I was in the third grade, I was the most advanced kid in my class. Yeah, the other kids were only seven. And I was already 15. <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you. Uh, every year about this time, Jeannie goes on some crazy diet. Last year was eggs. Nothing but eggs. For three months, she ate so many eggs, she even started looking like a chicken. One night I said to her, Honey, I wish you'd throw away that old feathered nighty. It tickles me. And she said, What nighty? <laughs> Sleep with his head in a safe. That's what I say. Jonathan Witters, along with Don Rickles, are the only two performers that were never written for. All Dean has are the straight lines on a cue card over Jonathan's shoulder, asking him half a dozen questions. 
Dean has absolutely no idea, nor does anyone else on that set, including me, how Jonathan's going to answer. And what you see is six, eight minutes of a completely and totally improvised moment. You need those peanuts, they're good. You know, working with John the Winters is, is about the wildest thing I do. That's because I never know what he'll do. Like tonight, all I know is I'm supposed to be a bartender. I don't have the slightest idea what he's going to be. But well, let's find out, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jonathan Winters. Uh, just give me anything you got. It don't make no difference, really. <coughs> I'm just, I'm so depressed. I really am. I, I uh, oh, is that straight, Jim? Yeah. Oh, gee. I don't know, buddy. I don't know. It is. That's what it is. <laughs> well, here's here's looking at you, I guess, whatever they say. Okay. Mm. You need that? I don't see as clear as I did a minute ago. <laughs> you really needed that. Why are you so depressed? What's the matter? Well, I tell you, I, I don't want to bore you with a lot of stuff, but I drove better than 2,500 miles today. I buried my step cousin here an hour ago, and uh, it was well, it was just something else. <laughs> to throw that boy with just a pair of trunks on in an open grave—that's not right. <laughs> pair of polka dot trunks. <laughs> well, I... Give me another one, will you? Oh, yeah, sure. I, that wasn't all. That's for your step, bro. He was... Uh, thank you so much. Uh, well, I... Like I say, that was bad enough uh, for me to come that far and, and see something like that. It was a shocker. It was a shocker. And I, I went over there then to find out what I was going to get in the will. And, uh, because I'd been awful good to him over the years. I'd sent him little sponge cakes and cookies when he was in the war. I did a lot of things, boy. I sent him a good pair of wire clippers, things like that. <laughs> so I felt something was coming to me, understand? Yeah. Something was due me. Yeah. Well, it seems that, uh, now he married a teenager. She took a lot of everything. But the thing that the thing that threw me, Mister, I hate to lay this on you. You know where most of his money went? No, I don't know. To a fifteen-pound tomcat. <laughs> tomcat had a head on him that day. He never even come to the funeral. <laughs> Just sat there on the porch with them little furry legs. <laughs> I tell you, there's something else. Did he get all the money? He got $4,000. If he never got nothing else, he got that. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going right back there now to the house where he is. I know, he's sitting there on the porch. <laughs> I'm going to tie a dozen white mice around him. Just drive him crazy. Yeah. See what about money of what that'll buy for him, right? Yeah. I'll see you. Okay. What kind of a neighborhood is this? Yeah. Hi. Care for a drink? I'm Tuffy Steeler. I, uh, you know that big construction company right near your bar here? Tuffy Steeler? I'm Tuffy Steeler. <laughs> 
you know, the other day they had this big steel ball and went whee, right into an apartment house, and the people were still in it. <laughs> oh, I hope that's the Shirley Temple. I don't make anything hard. <laughs> Hi, oh. yes. oh. lady. Boo. <laughs> well, there's a Shirley Temple with a Regan in it. <laughs> well, whatever they're saying, cheers. Bottoms up. <laughs> oh, yes. Here's to your corn tassel. Mercy. Well, I'll see you. I'm so excited now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> storms and everything. I was hit twice by that elm down there. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's a bad guy, Oil. <laughs> you rascal. <laughs> You're sweet. What's your name? Paul. Paul. Paul what? Paul what? Paul what? I see in the paper what you did. <laughs> Bad news. Say, uh, oh, I'll drink this now. I have money. I didn't bring my purse. Well, Some teenager rolled me near that pond. Give me another one. All right. It's your heart. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Happy Easter, and Lolly Lulu. <laughs> Here's one for the bird. <laughs> Thank you, Santa Dominic. <laughs> wait, wait. Stay, you miserable bird. I put $14 in that thing. Yeah. I'll feed you to a cat. <laughs> there you go again for that. <laughs> I've seen an ad here in the paper in the Daily Eagle, and I also seen a little card in your window. Yeah, there's a sign out there. We're looking for a waitress. We'd like to have a waitress. Oh, bless you. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 86 years old. I, my body is, well, it, hands are a little gnarly, but I, I could, I could mix well with the, with the customers and, well, uh, Maybe let's... plug the the machine in for you once in a while. Well, huh? it, 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 uh... I need, I need help. Wait, it's a topless. It's j Wait, it's topless. Wait, oh, topless. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my body's like an uprooted rubber plant. <laughs> Oh, 
But pays a pays a hundred and twenty five dollars. Hundred and twenty five dollars? Yeah. Give me an hour in the alley to work out, will you? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, from the mozzarella room of the Canaloni Hilton, high atop Durwood Kirby, overlooking a mugging, just two miles from downtown Fresno, the provolone capital of the world. And now to help bring in the new year, here is our all-girl orchestra asking the musical question, Opus One. <laughs> from the three-month tour of his wine cellar, the baritone of the breweries, Mr. Blinky Tomlin. Now I'm thinking my affection can change my complexion from rose to whitey red. And the time she holds my hand, I'll help me that she's mine. I remember when I was a little girl, I fell in love with the most wonderful boy in the world. I remember the first time he took me to his apartment. He kissed my hand, he kissed my shoulder, he kissed my face, he kissed me and kissed me again and again until finally I looked up into his eyes and I said... Is that all there is? Is that all there is? If that's all there is, my friend, then let's keep it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, with us tonight, four great stars from Hollywood. First, let me introduce my good friend, You gave me your soul, but the good stuff you kept for yourself. Judy, here's one of my closest friends, Mr. James Cagney. <laughs> Warden, I'm not going in that room, see? I'm not going in that room. What's that lady's room? Scarlet, you dirty, lovely rat. <laughs> you're going to hear from Rhett Butler. Whether you like it or not, you're going to hear from Rhett Butler. Go ahead, Rhett. Yeah, I... Scarlet, you can stay with the South, but I'm joining the Union. I got this, Scarlet, because it pays sixty twenty an hour. <laughs> I'd like to have you meet... Mr. Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> All right, Sam, play it again. Ooh. One more time, Sam, play it again. You're going to have to keep playing it, Sam, till you learn it, see? It's really exciting.
exciting, isn't it? And the real biggie is yet to come. Right off the sound stage is over at Biograph. We invited, just for New Year's Eve, the world's greatest comedian, Mr. Charles Chaplin. <laughs> television viewers welcome to another program in the series the psychology of marriage i'm dr jasper director of the institute for marital fulfillment here at the institute we try to help married couples who are having difficulty in relating to each other as man to woman or whatever the case may be we're not stuffy here <laughs> Husband and wives employ all sorts of marital signals. With some couples, a very subtle signal is all that is required to get the romantic message across. Raising an eyebrow, patting the back of the hair, or just casually stroking the earlobe. Of course, the earlobe stroking signal works only for some couples. As Masters once remarked to Johnson, it takes different strokes for different folks. <laughs> in some marriages, the wife has to be slightly less subtle in communicating her romantic desires to her husband. lasts, the less sensitive a husband becomes to his wife's marital signals. You might say that an old husband is like an old radio. He can still be turned on, but he only works at a very low frequency. <laughs>
because I'm not used to being this high without my parachute. <laughs> Besides, this horse is due back on the merry-go-round by 11 o'clock. <laughs> now, I'll tell you the truth, there's only one guy in the world I'd do this for, and he just happens to be the nicest guy there is. And I want to bring him out now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Wayne. <laughs> sure do sit a horse well. I can't tell you how happy I am to have you on the show. Well, I can't tell you how glad I am to be here, Dean. Yep. And I sure want to thank you for getting me such a good horse. Well, that ain't no ordinary horse, pal. They don't say that horse was a zebra before the white knight went by, you know. <laughs> I'm working on a western right now with Kirk Douglas, and I sure wish you were with us. Now I gotta give up Weston's too hard to read the cue cards when I'm galloping <laughs> along. Well, don't give me that, Dean. We've made two Westerns together, and you never missed a line. Don't let this get out, pal, but I was writing Mr. Ed, and he never missed a line. That's what I'm <laughs> Tell me, Duke, of all the pitches you've ever made, what's your favorite? Well, the one I had taken last week was Marisa. My eight-month-old daughter. Oh, well, that's nice, pal. You know, <coughs> I think it's, well, you, you having all those kids, and especially now having a new little baby, I'm, I'm proud of you, Duke. Well, I'm proud of you, too, Dean. You know, you got seven. You haven't exactly been sitting around staring at walls, either. <laughs> well, well, every, Duke, everybody, you know... Seems to love you, and let me ask you something. They all want to know, here you are, one of the biggest stars in the whole world, been making pictures for 37 years, got a spanking new daughter. Now, what do you want for her, Duke? Well, uh, same as that. any parent wants, I guess. I'd just like to stick around long enough to... See, she gets started right. I'd like her to know some of the values that we knew as kids, some of those values that too many people these days are thinking are old-fashioned. Most of all, I want her to be grateful as I am every day of my life to live in these United States. I know it may sound a little corny, but the first thing my daughter is learning from me is the Lord's Prayer and some of the Psalms. And I really don't care if she ever memorizes the Gettysburg Address just so long as she understands it. And since little girls are seldom called upon to defend their country, she may never have to raise her hand for that oath, but I certainly want her to respect all those who do. I guess uh, that's about what I want for my daughter, Dean. I'm proud to know you, Duke. Slogan. Keep cool in your car. Don't be too passionate. If you're not real careful, you're sure as heck crash in it. <laughs> I'm Mr. Rutledge, head of the department. Oh, I'm Dean Martin. I'm trying to renew my license. Dean Martin? Yeah, Dean Martin. You mind if I call you Dino? You know, I watch your show on and off. You do? Sure. Every time it's on, I turn it off. <laughs> See, uh, you have quite a reputation around here. When you last applied for your driver's license, you had three moving violations. Well, what's so bad about that? Plenty. It was the written test. <laughs> you still have a chance to renew your new license. Uh, Go ahead, ask me a few questions. Just, uh, do you drink when you drive? Of course not. 
then I guess you don't drive very much. See <laughs> you know, I set it up for him? That's a double nifty for me. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Let's see what you know about the road. What should you do when you see a vehicle's unattended? Get the hubcaps. <laughs> That's two for two you for and me. two for me. What's the best way to get started on ice? Pour some booze on it. Watch an Uncle Turk easily. Can a driver take exotic fruits across the border? Well, I once picked up a hitchhiker I wasn't too sure about. <laughs> Keep up these salty answers. I'll not only revoke your license, I'll have Ralph Nader recall your body. <laughs> you may be Dean Martin to you, but to me, you're only two Wayne Newtons. Well, I just wonder. None of your flip answers. You know, you're not the only biggie that gets a driver's license. This morning, Milt, Wilt Chamberlain came in here with his Volkswagen. Does Will Chamberlain drive a Volkswagen? Now he dribbles it. <laughs> Tell me, do you need glasses? Only when I drink. Oh. <laughs> Put another nifty for me. Another nifty. Ah. All right, let's see if the eyes have it. Now cover your right eye with this book of matches. And read this over here, please. Okay. R I V I E R A. Where do you see R I V I E R A? Right here, Riviera Hotel, right there. <laughs> You're not even with in college. You're a real riot. <laughs> pretend that we're driving. Okay. Uh -huh. It's okay as long as we don't pretend that we're parked. <laughs> okay, now let's say we're on the freeway and you're, you're going maximum speed. A car just cuts you off, another car's changing in your lane, and a truck ahead of you is making a U-turn. Quick, what do you do? Pray, pray, pray. <laughs> let's say your brakes failed. Uh, how would you stop the car? I'll look for something cheap and aim for it. <laughs> now for the hand signals. Uh, what does this mean? Right turn. How about this one? Left turn. Wrong, silly. I'm driving my nails. <laughs> well, you passed. You got 80 out of 100. And that's just a pedestrian. <laughs> Here's your license, Mr. Martin. Oh, thanks, pal. In the words of Richard Nixon... I'll be back in four years. Oh, <laughs> I'm late for dinner. I'll see you, buddy. Dean never memorized a script. Not a line, not a word, nothing, not a comma. He never read a script. He read a couple of cue cards. And occasionally, he would say to the cue card, can you move that in a little closer, please? And we left it on the air. That was part of the fun of the show. Because I'm number one. We have a... <laughs> Hi, Ken. <laughs> Dean. <laughs> Poor guy. He's still still suffering from an old injury. Yeah, it happened in the South Pacific during the last war. He got water on the knee. His canteen leaked. <laughs> a net on him in a minute. <laughs> Moonlight becomes you. It goes with your hair. You 
certainly know the right way to wear. <laughs> That's a pretty, that's a, that song's very familiar. What is it? You look like a guy that sold me an old flint. Girl of my dreams. I love you, yeah, honest I do, you live alone, <laughs> well I'm gonna leave you now, I'm gonna go to the couch, <laughs> Which way is the couch? <laughs> that way? That way. Are you went? That way is where I'm going. Okay, I see. <laughs> you're beautiful when you're angry. <laughs> dare I? Dare I open it? I'm afraid of it. Oh, well, I'm going to try. If there's a bear in here. Uh... <laughs> Shows. Just came out to pick up the empties. The empties? Oh. <laughs> you, you, you gotta loosen up a little. I know, I got Maybe if you had a little drink before you went on, just no. to get you relaxed. Oh, no, I only drink before the show. <laughs> hey, no, no, I just want to tell you that I'm, I love your show. I, I love it because Jeannie watches it every night, you know? Does and it's really? good for me because she's, uh, that stops her from going out <laughs> looking for me. <laughs> You bet your... was probably a guest on the Dean Martin show more than any other performer. Dean really liked him. Really liked him. Felt very comfortable with Don. Uh -huh. What seems to be the trouble? I'm nervous. Yes, I see, I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you must relax, of course. Excuse me, do you mind if I put this out? Oh. <laughs> now, just relax. You see, the nervous that people are reason. The reason that people are nervous is that they are basically insecure. 
They don't trust anything or anybody. Young man, exactly what seems to make you so nervous? Nervous? It's just that I'm afraid. Uh-huh. <laughs> My dear young man, basically every one of us is afraid. But we must face life realistically and ask, what is there to be afraid of? Is there anything to be afraid of? There's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> well, is there? No? I'm so glad because I'm so worried lately. <laughs> ah, but now we must help you. Please lie down. On the couch. On the couch. Now, this is a word test, and I... Oh, I'll erase that. <laughs> this is a word test. I will say a word, and you will say the first word that comes into your mind. And that way, we'll find out what the trouble is. Ready? Set. Go. Come. <laughs> No, no, no. Yes. Wait. Elephant. I... <laughs> Elephant? <laughs> Open. Shut. Down. Up. White. Shut up. <laughs> uh-huh. Now. Uh, pay attention. Life. Death. Wife. Death. Death. Why? I know what the trouble is. Well, I hate my wife. <laughs> but now we must help you. Tell me something about your home life. Do you have any little ones? Well, once in a while before a meal, maybe a couple at lunch. But that's just too much. It never hurts nobody, you know. That's too much. Well, that doesn't sound like a problem. What is your problem? Uh, I have a split personality. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, I see. What the kind of talk is that? <laughs> I didn't get any idea. I want to say, I have a split personality. Inside, I am really two people. Me and Charlie. Hey, Charlie. I see. You realize, of course, that this will affect your bill. <laughs> ah, no, no, no. Save it for the end. <laughs> Not a good about that. I, I, I'd do anything to get rid of Charlie. I'd say, baby. Hey, listen. Now, listen, my dear young man. Charlie is just a delusion. He doesn't exist. Once you realize that, you're cured. Don't you realize that? Yes. You're cured. Good. I'm cured. I'm cured. What do you, what do you say to that, Charlie? I'm cured. What did he no. say? He's, uh, he wants to say, so he wants to talk to his handler. No, 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 you mustn't let him sit down in this chair right here. No, 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 open. Let me talk to him. If they get rid of us, it would be B. Hey. Right? <laughs> open. <laughs> hey, what time is it? Oh, it's there. Yeah. I th Wait, open? Ah, listen, Charlie, I know you're not there. You may be able to bulldoze him, but I'm a psychiatrist, and I know you're not there. Shaking your fist like that's not going to help you, Charlie. <laughs> listen, I'm still talking to Charlie, and trust me, open? Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> I got him! Best shot I've ever played. Listen, you are rid of Charlie. You're rid of your teeth. You're rid of your gums. And for a week, you have gas. That's all. <laughs> You're right. It's going to last. I'm sure. Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> Once again, science has conquered the delusions of the mind. I have conquered. I have triumphed. I have. Oh, you who? I have Charlie. I have you, Charlie. Charlie. I never get a girl who looks like her. 
Oh, what are you complaining about? I once made a western, didn't even get the horse. Hey, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bob. How's your new picture coming along? Oh, great. Phyllis. <laughs> You know that Phyllis Diller's in my picture, and wait till you see her big scene. Four guys strap her into the chair. You never heard such yelling and screaming in all your life. Then the chaplain says a few words over. You, you mean they electrocute her? No, she's getting her hair done. <laughs> Straight line got a bigger laugh. Wait a minute. You know something? You're always complaining about women. Yeah? Yeah. Well, how come you're not like uh, Chevalier or Charles Boyer or, or Louis Jordan? The French, you know, they really know how to make a girl feel like a girl. Yeah, they did wonders with Bridget Bardot. Oh, I don't even understand, Finn. I have trouble figuring out half the postcard. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. It's easy. Follow me. Okay? Right. Try. The book. Le livre. Le livre. The book. The pen. La plume. La plume. The pen. To open. Ouvri. Ouvri. To open. Ferme. Shut. To shut. Verme. Now the pronouns that you need are je and vous. Je means me and vous means you. That's you. Now do them all. Just watch me plow right through. Je send vous to shut verme. Verme, Now rouge in your eyes. Anything you can do, I can do worse. <laughs> Brush up your Shakespeare. Start quoting him now. Brush up your Shakespeare. And the women you will wow. Just declaim a few lines from Othello. And they'll think you're a heck of a fellow If your blonde won't respond when you flatter her Tell her what Tony told me or pat her If her virtue at first she defends well Just remember that all's well that ends well So your Shakespeare And they all Shakespeare and the women you will watch. If your girl is a Washington Heights dream, mm. treat the kid to a midsummer's night's dream. Just recite an occasional sonnet, and your lap will have someone upon it. If she then wants an all by herself night. Let her rest every 11th or 12th night. <laughs> Just brush, brush your Shakespeare and they all count out. Think style, they all count out. Oh, yeah.
a son who is three years old, and we're expecting another in, in March. Uh, and while this, this may sound like I'm bragging, uh, he is he's very intelligent. But the reason it isn't really bragging is because I have the feeling that all children are very intelligent, that they're much more intelligent than we, for instance, give them credit for. They just sort of, they sort of hold back, you know, until they reach uh, the age of 15 or 16, and then all this intelligence comes out in, in that one year, you know. And science tells us that the children have intelligence even prenatally. And so uh, to sort of prove this, Dean and I would like to show you a set of twins one month before birth. <laughs> didn't think they stood up, did you? <laughs> what, uh, what time is it, you know? Hmm? Oh, 3.30. And mo uh, morning or afternoon? I, I can't tell the difference either. <laughs> Oh, I got a cramp in my leg, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> where, where, where does this cord go? Do you know it? <laughs> Maybe we're electric. That's <laughs> Both asleep. You sure? <laughs> she, 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 she's getting them up. <laughs> she, she said the baby just moved. He's he's coming over to listen. Don't don't do anything. Don't do anything. He's going back to sleep now. <laughs> I was right. It's 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> he just said, you realize it's 3.30 in the morning? That's what he said. <laughs> and I just started to cry. She says Fred would have wanted children. Who, who's Fred? I don't know, but she's always bringing him up. <laughs> Oh, did you hear him uh, picking out names today? Yeah, uh, I hope you're Norman. <laughs> I'll be Shirley. You be Norman. <laughs> Listen, uh, you want to have some fun? <laughs> Press down, we'll give her false labor pains. <laughs> She's got him up. She's got him up. <laughs> he, he just fell out of the bed. <laughs> he says, don't worry, honey. He, he's going to boil some water. <laughs> he says, what's that for? He says, I don't know. I saw it in the movie. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's going for his watch now. He, sa he says he wants to see how far apart they are. <laughs> How far apart do you want to make? <laughs> Let's make them 30 seconds apart. That should shake them up pretty good. <laughs> you won't believe this. He just left without her. I'm not putting you on. He left without her. Boy, we got a beauty for an old man. I tell you. <laughs> Okay, don't uh, don't press down anymore. Let's get some sleep. I wasn't pressing down. What what, what do you mean you weren't pressing down? I I, I wasn't pressing down. <laughs> Good Lord, this is it. This is it. Yeah. <laughs>
This is an emergency. Put my call through and I personally will get you on the Bell telephone hour. Operator, I did tell you the correct area code in Swahili. Operator, I haven't got all day. I have to get back to my farm and rotate my jewelry. Hey, Dick, I've been trying to dial a pet park direct and I can't seem to get through. Well, call long distance. Long distance! Operator, please hurry my call. The wall of this phone booth is covered with obscenities. And that's the only thing that's keeping me here. <laughs> I'm just returning Miss Clark's call. Tell her I don't know the way to San Jose either. Hey, Operator, I've been in here so long, I just want an Oscar for the best continuing performance in a phone booth. This is Hoss Cartwright. When they when they built this telephone booth, they, they had little Joe in mind. Operator, I know all about holding the line. My husband plays football for the Dallas Cowboys. Look, this is Alan Sears. Just tell Petula Cargo if he doesn't get on the phone right away, it's... Goodbye, Mrs. Chips. Hello, this is Sugar Ray Robinson. Will you tell Petula Clark I've got to get through to her? Or they'll accuse me of throwing the call. Cooperator, oh, how do I get the call? Just dial her. Oh, okay. <laughs> P E T. Look, operator, I can't wait. I gotta go over to Johnny Carson's house to watch Merv Griffin. Operator, I can't wait. I gotta get over to Johnny Carson's house and watch Dick Cab. Uh, look, operator, holding on on the phone this long is my second favorite thing in the whole world. No, my favorite thing is going over to Andy Williams' house and watching him wool out his sweaters. <laughs> this call the devil made me do it listen operator i'm a doctor and if you keep me on the phone any longer i'm gonna charge you for a house call forget it operator no wonder mr chip said goodbye he couldn't get through to her either but operator i can't stay in this booth all day checkout time's at three Operator, I've been waiting so long, I missed three payments on my car. Hello, Operator. I was trying to call Pat Clark, but I got, I got this strange man on the phone. It, yes, he, he kept breathing heavily, and he said the most obscene things to me. Operator, you're a woman. You've just got to help me. What should I wear when I meet him next Thursday? <laughs> to talk to Petula Clark. Oh, she'll know me. Tell her I'm the guy who looks like Cary Grant. <laughs> On second thought, make that Ulysses S. Uh, I want to get Pet Clark. No, I don't want to phone her. I just want to get her. That's right, out there. Yeah, I'm the Danny Thomas from Make Room for Granddaddy. But when I first placed the call, I wasn't even a daddy yet. Oh, right. Look, I can't spend the rest of my life waiting on this phone. Well, if I have to wait, at least get something to turn me on. 
like a princess telephone. No. Come on, operator. We can't stay in this phone booth all day. Don't say that, you big ninny. I'm not leaving here until I've called every girl's number on this wall. Well, look, operator, Petula Clark and I are very good friends. Well, we're not exactly good friends. We just happen to know a lot about each other. Look, operator, I can't get through. Just give Miss Clark my home phone number, will you? Saigon 4, 3000. Operator, please put me through. This is, this is an obscene call. do it very often, Dino. The last time I let my hair down, somebody took it. <laughs> oh, really, Howard. I never knew you were such a, a regular guy. You know, when I hear you using all those big words on television, I, it kind of makes me feel inferior. Hush, hush, sweet superstar. My <laughs> predilection for polysyllabic verbiage is a mere idiosyncrasy. It's no reason for you to feel inferior at all. I'm only a man like you. I have the same hopes, the same fears, the same desires, the same two arms, the same two legs. I just happen to be a hell of a lot smarter than you. <laughs> oh, you're just trying to make me feel better, huh? <laughs> Dino, you know, this establishment has a most congenial atmosphere. Do you come here often? Yeah, it's my favorite bar. They even have home delivery. They deliver drinks to your home? No, they deliver me to my home. <laughs> Level with me, Dino. Do you drink a lot? No, I don't drink a lot. Just one gulp at a time. <laughs> Drop in here after the show. You know, just a quick one before I go home. You know, that's all. Just a quick evening. Perfectly understandable, Dino. After an arduous day of the frenzy and tension that attend television production, a little relaxation certainly is in order. I'm sorry, sir. I don't have a pen. That's okay. I don't have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I'll go home and have one. No, it wouldn't take me a minute. Oh, so we got you like it. I got a mustache. Uh, look like Clark Gable. <laughs> I'm crazy about you, baby. <laughs> Good, I'll take these then. <laughs> hey, Howie, I saw you interview that fighter on television a couple weeks ago. What was his name? Uh, Joe Frazier. Frazier, that's it, Joe Frazier. Tell me, just between you and me, is he really colored? <laughs> <laughs> Only on his parents' side. Uh, Hey, man, the house. You can? Yeah, what? No. no. <laughs> Think I 
could take it for 15 rounds. <laughs> your friend. I think I've seen him somewhere. You unquestionably have gazed upon his visage before. He sings on television. This is Dean. John Dean! <laughs> what an honor! Say, tell me, between you and me, President Nixon, is he <laughs> really a member of the Black Panthers? <laughs> to the Cuban community. <laughs> hey, Howie, you have to go to the bathroom? No. Hey, Chico, you have to go to the bathroom? No. Well, it must be me. I gotta go to the bathroom. a pig's egg. Pigs don't lay eggs. That's where you're wrong. If a pig likes you, he'll do anything for you. <laughs> Same call. Oh, good. I'll take it upstairs. Dean Whitcomb. Yes, sir. I'm, I, <laughs> I, I have a list of ultimatums from the student body. Either you yield or you suffer the consequences. And here are the ultimatums. Voluntary class attendance. No examinations, and we want liquor in the cafeteria and women in the men's dormitory. Well, of course you realize what this means. Yes, it means that we won't be seeing you around here as the president of college. Right, because I'm going to be a student. <laughs> tell you I'm getting married. Oh, darling, I'm so happy for you. Well, yes, but there's one thing I think you should know, Mother. My fiancé is a priest. A priest? Oh, no. Mother, no, please don't cry. Don't think of it. Then think of it this way. You're, you're not losing a daughter. You're gaining a father. <laughs> What is this old world coming to? Look at those two. You can't tell which is the boy and which is the girl. It's disgusting, Martha. Martha? I'm Harold. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. Well, you go down here a few blocks, stream left. Oh, what the... <laughs> Mr. Senator, the president of General Aerodynamics Corporation is here to see you, sir. Okay, send him in. <laughs> what a nice office. <laughs> Makes you think it's morning. I th <laughs> it was 
There's a bird on my window. Yeah. Seat. Dennis and I missed, but go right ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm here about the anti-ballistic missile. You are? Yes. Gee, do, are you going to take the anti-missile ballistic missile? <laughs> well, I'm going to come right to the point that the Department of Defense yes? has decided to give your company the contract for the new anti-ballistic missile. Now, how much was that again? Seventeen billion three hundred and sixty-nine seventy-nine thousand million dollars. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a lot of. <laughs> Do you take credit cards? Yes, and you get uh, stamps. for joining us, and I hope you'll all be big, 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 back. <laughs> back with us next week. We're going to have some great talent on the show like we had this week, and don't forget to look in. In the meantime, just keep all the cards and letters coming in, and this week, I sure want to thank that fruit picker <laughs> from Texas for sending me that banana-shaped like are you Roquel Welsh? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to peel it. 